Earlier this week, Just Capital announced its annual Just 100 list of America's best corporate citizens. Sustainable energy company Avangrid achieved the top spot among utilities and placed 12th overall. Joining us right now is Pedro Zagra, who is Avangrid's CEO. And Pedro, welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. What, what do you think puts you uh, in this Just 100 list? Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. And the first thing is, is the work of our women and men. I think, you know, without them, we would not be here. You know, we were the 224 in the list, you know, a few years ago. I think we're right now the number 12. But also, we are the number one in the utility, and we were before 16. So women and men, you know, doing their job is, you know, what brings us here. And thank you to CNBC and also Just Capital, because these are the type of rankings that we're not used to, but also very important for our society. Why don't we talk about Avangrid's business and, and what you all are doing just in terms of renewables. Um, renewables is a place a lot of money is kind of funneling into these days, but a lot of it's driven by government initiatives and government funding. How, how important is that government funding and what happens if governments change and decide that they are no longer going to pursue those same initiatives? As you know, there are many ways of, you know, helping renewals development. You know, in different countries, they have different approaches. I think in the U.S., you know, there is a tax-driven mechanism. You have production tax credits. You have investment tax credits. Tax equity is available. That's important. The history right now is that it has never been an issue for any of the two major parties in the U.S. It's always, you know, you are okay with this, but you negotiate other things. As long as, you know, that remains there, you know, the industry will continue. In our case, we're on the road, you know, to achieve, you know, 10,000 megawatts in the U.S. in renewable energy. We are right now in excess of 9,000 megawatts. And globally, you know, being part of, you know, Iberdrola Group, you know, with the leadership of Chairman Galan, you know, we're approaching more than 40,000 megawatts. So I think we are already contributing to the world. But your, your point is that if the government funding wasn't there, this would not be a booming business. It, it, it has to be supported by governments at this point. Part of the development has to be, you know, helped, you know, to make sure that happens. But also part of the assets, you already do PPAs. So you go straight to the market. You have customers, big customers, you know, people that you interview quite often. You know, we have PPAs with them as well. So you have a combination of, you know, just, you know, market, but also, you know, you know some help, you know, from production point of view for the major projects we are doing. Where, where are the, the biggest hurdles right now? I mean, most of the time when you talk to, to people about trying to change things, and it, it's the grid that is the underlying issue, trying to get power from where the wind blows to where it doesn't, trying to get power from where the sun shines to where it doesn't? I, I think in the many meetings we're having with, you know, both the federal government and many states, I can tell you they are very, very focused on these issues. The first one is permitting. I mean, the amount of permitting you need, it takes years. You know, it takes probably five, eight years to do an offshore wind park. It takes three, four, five years to do an onshore park or solar. The permitting is critical, so that's one of the issues. The second one, as, as you were saying right now, is also, you know, what I would call litigation. I think in the U.S., you know, everybody litigates. It's quite, you know, you know normal to have litigation for everything. That also delays, you know, the projects. So from, from our point of view, it's not access to capital. It's just predictability and permitting. Regulation is key. If you change regulation every year, things do not work. If you have a predictable framework, then things will be, will be invested and you will have, you know, the reality in the assets. Yeah, especially when you're talking about billions of dollars in investments. Those are not things that, that companies do lightly. And um, having stability over time definitely makes a big deal. Uh, Pedro, just last month, you all ended a merger deal that you had put through and planned with PNM Resources. That was a, a deal that had been in the works, I think, since October of 2020. So it's years in the making. Uh, PNM wanted to extend the deadline for that deal to get done. You all chose not to go that route. Why, why is that? You think this was something that was never going to get past regulators? I think there are moments in life that you just need to move on. I think we've been three years. You know, we have 23 out of 24 parties either supporting or opposing the deal. And still, we had a negative reaction by the public commission. The public commission changed, but after three years, we're still waiting, you know, we were still waiting for the public commission, you know, decision now after, you know, the Supreme Court that we were waiting. So it's basically a moment that after, you know, so, so many delays, we didn't have certain certainty on the timeline. And that was the decision. But at the same time, last year, you know, we were very successful in upgrading networks in New York. We have a rate case, Maine as well. We actually put, you know, more than $9 billion with, you know, both renewables and networks of additional investments for the years to come. $9 billion is a lot of money. So there is a moment, I think, when you don't have certainty and clarity in timelines, you just need to move on. 
Does that give you any sort of um, fear factor in terms of uh, attempting another deal? Well, I think when you have organic investments, you know, probably more than 20 billion for the five years ahead of us, both in networks and renewables, that seems to me more than enough to focus on, you know. So if we were not to have that pipeline <laughs> of the organic investment, then maybe we'll think about something else.